the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. To it, a profitable Africa. Listen to the news on Africa Business Radio. Here are the headlines. Nigerian lawmaker backs e transmission of results with conditions. Inspector General of Police assures Nigerians of sustained efforts at improving security. Ivory Coast to become regional medicine hub with $300 million IFC loan. Sudan inflation soars above 400%. Details of the stories and more after the break. I am Chukunonsu Modi. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, has advanced reasons to justify the position taken by the Senate on the electronic transmission of election results. The Senate voted that the Commission may consider the electronic transmission of results, provided the national coverage is adjudged to be adequate and secure by the National Communications Commission and approved by the National Assembly. Lawan explained that the upper chamber voted the way it did in defense of about half of the Nigerian voters, whose votes will not be counted with immediate deployment or application of electronic transmission of election results. The Inspector General of Police, IGP Usman al Baba, has assured the nation of sustained efforts by the force in fighting crimes and criminality and improving public safety and security across the country. The IGP charged commissioners of police in all the states of the Federation and Federal Capital Territory and the Supervisory Assistant Inspector General of Police to beef up security ahead of the Edo Kabir celebration to prevent any untoward situation in their areas of responsibility throughout the Edo Kabi season and beyond. He particularly directed the zonal AIGs and state command CPs to put in place all necessary security measures to ensure a secure, peaceful and incident-free celebration. The Independent National Electoral Commission suggested it has the capacity to transmit election results electronically from remote areas across the country. APC senators forced through a version of the bill at the Senate that constrained INEC to seek permission from the Nigerian Communications Commission and National Assembly before employing electronic voting in any part of the country. The lawmakers opposed to sacrosanct electronic transmission of results, saying some parts of the country do not have the required network coverage. An executive commission the Nigerian Communications Commission, Adeleke Adewolu, told lawmakers of the House of Representatives that only 50% of the country has a 3G coverage required for transmission. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries resolved to gradually add more inventory to the oil market as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates finally put aside their differences. The oil cartel will boost supply by as much as 400,000 barrels per day each month from August until all of its stranded output due to its decision to curb production last year, following the twin impact of the prize war between Russia and Saudi Arabia and COVID-19 pandemic has been restored. Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Iraq, Kuwait and Russia have now been given new baselines against which their production costs are measured from May next year. The UAE had said that the way its quota was calculated was unfair because it did not reflect the costly expansion in the country's industry. Ivory Coast Prime Minister Patrick Achi says the World Bank program to help medical clinics in Ivory Coast procure equipment from General Electric and Philips could spoil the cocoa producing countries' development into a regional medical hub. A three hundred dollars million financing agreement signed on Friday by Ivory Coast and the World Bank's International Finance Corporation aims to remedy that situation by providing credit to clinics, hoping to get supplies from Philips and General Electric. Achi says Philips and General Electric will become the only two companies from which Ivorian private and public medical facilities procure medical equipment. Achi sees the agreement's exclusivity clause as a reason for optimism. 
The Algerian Foreign Ministry has recalled its ambassador to Morocco and hinted at possible further measures in the latest flare-up of tension between the North African neighbours over the disputed territory of Western Sahara. The ministry says the move was linked to coming from the Moroccan envoy to the United Nations on Mohilal on Algeria's Kabylie region. Hilal had called out a meeting of the non-aligned movement for the right of self-determination for the people living in the Kabila region in reference to Algeria's Tamazai speaking minority. He has suggested that Algeria should not deny that while backing self-determination for Western Sahara. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa has joined post riots cleanup efforts as his government won against vigilantism and sought to avert racial conflict following days of unrest. The country was gripped by more than a week of chaos in which more than 200 people were killed as looters ransacked shopping centers and rioters touched key industrial infrastructure and blocked trade routes. His trial for corruption in a separate case is due to resume on Monday. Afghanistan has withdrawn its ambassador and diplomats from Pakistan's capital following the kidnapping of the ambassador's daughter. The Afghan foreign ministry has said a new blow to relations at a sensitive time for the Afghan peace process. Pakistan authorities have said they are inv- investigating the incident. The Afghan foreign ministry says the Afghan government recalled the ambassador and senior diplomats to Kabul until the complete elimination of security threats, including the arrest and punishment of the perpetrators. Britain will set out a plan on Monday to stimulate trade with 70 developing economies by lowering tariffs and simplifying rules. Its latest push to promote freer global commerce after regaining control of its trade policy following Brexit. The government will detail the developing country's trading scheme in a consultation document. The plan builds on an existing European Union scheme that Britain was part of before leaving the bloc at the end of last year and has kept in place while working on its new programme. Trade Minister Liz Truss says the UK is an independent trading nation. They have a huge opportunity to do things differently, taking a more liberal, pro-trade approach that leads to growth and opportunity. Britain says it has studied similar schemes in Canada, the United States, Japan and the EU when drawing up its new programme. The government is seeking views on the plan from businesses and other stakeholders over the next eight weeks. State media reported that inflation in Sudan has jumped to more than 400% amid popular discontent over rising prices after a series of IMF-backed economic reforms. The official news agency soon now reported that the annual inflation reached 412.75% in June compared with 378.79% in May. Suna says the latest spike in inflation rate was because of price hikes including on food. Sudan scraped diesel and petrol subsidies and carried out a managed float of Sudanese pound to stem a rampant black market. The measures seen by many Sudanese as harsh were part of reforms backed by the International Monetary Fund to enable Sudan to qualify for debt relief. Hajj pilgrims streamed out of the holy city of Mecca towards Mina, the second day of a massively scaled-down version of Islam's greatest pilgrimage, held in the shadow of coronavirus for the second year running. Authorities in Saudi Arabia are only allowing 60,000 fully vaccinated citizens and residents to take part, far from the vast crowds of some 2.5 million pilgrims who descend on Mecca in normal times. Health authorities confirmed at a briefing late Sunday that not a single coronavirus case had been reported amongst the pilgrims. An investigation into a massive data leak by The Guardian, The Washington Post and 15 other media outlets showed that activists, politicians and journalists from around the world were targeted in a surveillance operation using software sold by the Israeli surveillance company NSO Group. The reports released really say authoritarian governments abuse a Pegasus software hacking 37 smartphones. The Guardian says the leak contains a list of more than 50,000 numbers believed to have been of interest to clients of NSO since 2016. The Washington Post reported numbers in the list also belong to heads of state and prime ministers, members of Arab royal families, diplomats and politicians, as well as activists and business executives. The British government has lifted all pandemic restrictions in England, including rules on mask wearing and social distancing, despite scientists' warnings that the move will further drive an already surging pandemic and risk creating new variants. The curbs were lifted at midnight on Sunday as laws mandating face masks and walking from home were scrapped. The lifting of the rules means nightclubs are also able to reopen for the first time since the UK first went into lockdown in March last year. Other indoor venues such as theatres and cinemas also be able to operate at full capacity. 
Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who is in isolation after Health Minister Sajid Javid tested positive for COVID-19, urged people to remain cautious. He hopes that the UK's rollout of coronavirus vaccines will help protect the country, even as infections surge the levels last seen in January. Before we go, let's take another look at some of the major stories. Nigerian lawmaker backs e-transmission of results with conditions. Inspector General of Police assures Nigerians of sustained efforts and improving security. Ivory Coast to become regional medicine hub with $300 million IFC loan. Sudan inflation soars above 400%. That was the news at this time on Africa Business Radio. You can continue to listen live online at www.africabusinessradio.com or via our mobile app. I am Chukun Modi and thank you for listening. are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio. Towards a profitable Africa.